All right, well, let's get started. Again, I said that the way you learn is to do this stuff is just to kind of do it. So here's what I want you to do is go to, go to your folder where you've been basically uploading all your files. You should see an Excel file called AACR 2018, OC versus TAMS for pathway analysis. Open up that Excel. Okay, everybody got it open? Okay. So again, this gene list, the p-value is incredibly small. And in actuality, what we're doing is we're actually kind of comparing apples to oranges. We've got a macrophage versus, you know, ovarian tissue, cancerous tissue. What I want to do is I think it would be really cool to see things that are in my macrophages but not in my tumor. And maybe that will give me a, say, a macrophage signature that I can use to look at other things. So here's what I want you to do. <clears throat> is under two, row 2C, I want you to select, or I mean under column C, select row 2. Or just select the cell 2C. And then on your sort, which will, on yours is going to be on your right here. You'll see the A to Z. I want you to sort descending. Or maybe yours says largest to smallest. Okay, everybody do that. You should see a 10 at the top. Okay, sweet. All right, now that we've done that, so what I want to do is I'm going to get the top 100 genes that are overexpressed in my macrophage. So I'm going to select cell, I'm going to select 2A, and I'm going to go all the way down to 201. That will give me the top 200, because we have a text file at the top. And mine is GPR85. I'm not sure what yours is. Could be a little different. So, and then just shift and select. And then just copy any way you want. Okay. Let us go back to our Chrome browser. And what I want you to do under your bookmarks, there should be a bookmark for string. Again, string is a free networking tool. A free networking tool. You might see that on one of your tests today. I don't know. <laughs> okay, is everybody there? Once you get to string, just say, I want to search. This is a great program. I really like, I think it's very important to have kind of a networking software too, you know, just to see how everything's connected. Okay, so once you're at this page, I want you to hit multiple proteins. We're going to search for lots of things because we're going to put those 200 genes in. Okay, so under here, under list of names, paste your list. Okay, we're going to go to organism. We're going to say this is a human. And I'm going to hit select. And now I'm going to hit search. This next page, all it's doing is saying what transcripts does it recognize and what does it not. And given that this is RNA seq study, we get a lot of transcripts that don't have really have any annotation. So when we actually we put in 200, but at the very end, you're going to find we only get 161 genes out of this. So I'm going to hit. So you're going to hit continue. Can I get a wow? No, just kidding. <laughs> so this is, does everybody's graph look like this? Yeah. Now you can see these things, right? We can look up genes. We can see what's connected to what. Just out of common sense, what do you think maybe are some of the major players? What, what are you looking for in here? What's that? Immune-regulated genes. Well, yeah, and a lot of them are immune-regulated. But I mean, just from a visual standpoint, what do you think are the big players? The hubs. Yeah, the hubs, right? <laughs> like interleukin-10. 
If you actually read the paper, because I'm sure you all did, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> they actually mention interleukin 10 a lot in their paper, right? And we can see why, because it's connected to all kinds of stuff. You got this uh, toll-like receptor here, 7, I think is very interesting. Here is the great thing. And then you, you look down here, you've got this LILRB. So this is, you can click on these genes, get more information. Maybe, there it is. So this is a receptor for all kinds of different stuff, right? That's probably an important molecule and you can see exactly what it's probably interacting with, right? Kind of this hub in here. Let's color it. Actually, Let's make a few changes here. So here on the bottom, I want you to go down to, so if you go to legend, this is basically telling you what those interactions are. And if you go to any of those links, basically you can click on this and it'll tell you what information it's using to connect those genes. Here it's using co-expression data and then these genes have been mentioned in Pub PubMed abstracts. So that's why it's connecting those. Again, not only is it connecting it based on the text, but also data itself. Genes that are expressed with other genes tend to be related. Okay, is everybody, everybody doing all right? So how often would you say this is wrong? Like it says that two things are interacting when they're actually, like what percent of the time? Where they might not be interacting? Yeah, I mean this is claiming that all these things are interacting, but I'm sure they're wrong like 5% of the time or 10 like, do you know? Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, what you can do is you can, you can basically, there's a lot of settings. So let's go to settings real quick. It sort of depends on what you mean by wrong. So yeah. Each of these links does have a literature reference. Right. So the question is, do you believe the literature? And some of it, like I said, some of it's based on co-expression rates too. So some of it's not even in the literature. The fact is, is though, so what we can do is, so now we're coloring it by evidence. Let's color it by molecular action. So this is going to tell you if genes are known to maybe like induce or inhibit that those relationships will be put on our thing. You can also do again, as far as like, if you want to make it real confident, you could say, I want, you know, highest confidence that these things are related. If you wanted, I'm just going to leave it median confidence. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you can say, high disconnected nodes in the network. So I'm going to hide all the genes that aren't connected to another gene in my, in my, uh, my list. So we go up here, hit update. So now we're starting, now some other things are starting to come up, right? Interleukin 10 is inhibiting the CD36. You know, we can look over here. Let's go to the bottom. Yeah, and you can see this, like, I think this is really interesting. Look at all the things it's binding over here. It's like this is inducing this, which is doing all, carrying out its bidding, I guess. I don't know. It's so funny. The more you look at genes, like, they start having a personality. Like, <laughs> like I have a personal relationship with genes. Like, anytime I see TNF, I'm like, oh, man, this, this system's crashing, <laughs> you know, or nf cap B. Oh, tissue's pissed off. <laughs> So what we can do is we can go to analysis now. So again, we pick these genes because they're overexpressed in the macrophages. And of course, they're probably going to be working together. And we absolutely expect that. So we had 161 genes here. By random chance, just random chance, we would expect 31 connections. We got 203, right? Again, that doesn't happen by random chance. The odds of that happening are less than 1 times 10 to the negative 16th. That's like breaking p-values there. What this tells me is that this gene list that we pulled out isn't random, right? It's connected. That this is another quality control test and I have put gene lists in here and when I don't get something with significant connections, it makes me wonder. Either I'm into something that no one's really seen before or I usually... Or it's usually like crappy data, right? What we are looking for is on these gene lists, you want this connectivity. You want these overrepresented units. And that's what I'm trying to pull out of these gene lists because that's what's important. No gene does anything by itself. I hate the term driver mutations. I just 
just absolutely hate it because it's not one gene, it's lots of genes. And as you can tell, it's signaling networks like this. You might be tempted to say, well, it's interleukin 10. Well, it's interleukin 10 interacting with a lot of other stuff. And you've got this whole thing over there. It's all about what this helps you to do is get to the story and we, we can actually fill it in a little bit more. So let's start coloring this network. So if we look at biological processes, and again, this is the pathways that are overrepresented. This is the text mining that this program is doing. Hit this more. So 63 of these genes are involved in the immune system process. Let's color those, right? Go down a little bit. Not only are we have a lot of genes in the immune system, but almost half of them are in the innate immune response, right? For a tumor, that's kind of interesting. In that, if you look, if, if you read the paper, they're basically saying, we think that these macrophages are, are invading these, these tumors are making things worse. You know, maybe they're hiding the immune response. Keep going down, we can look. Where did I see? I thought I saw a cell adhesion. That's kind of unusual. We wouldn't expect those genes. Keep going down. We can go to different. There's a lot of things that are represented. Molecular functions. 42 of these genes have receptor activity. That's unusual. The odds of me getting all those genes is like 1 times 10 to the negative 13th. So let's color those. We can look at cellular component. 87 of these genes are in the cell membrane. Again, very, very odd. Those might be interesting to look at. Easy to target. And you can do pathways, you can color these out, but basically what you do is you go up here and now, now we're colored based on the functions that we put in. And you can download this. This can be your figure in your paper. It's very, very easy. You can manipulate this. You can actually build these from scratch. You can start with a gene and say, just find me 50 genes that are most related to this gene that I'm looking at. And you can make your own networks. And again, if I'm looking for things that I think might be important, maybe I'm looking for things that have most of the colors that I actually put in, right? Again, not only you're looking for hubs, but you're looking for things that do things that you're interested in. And this one seems to do a lot. Same with this one. You can export this. There's a lot of different variations. I wish I had time to go over all of this, but um, I do have videos on string that you can watch. Um, so uh, any, those? yeah. Where are those videos? Um, I have my own YouTube channel. It's uh, Michael Edwards Bioinformatics. Um, my 15 year old daughter has five times the subscribers, so. <laughs> <laughs> So subscribe, please. <laughs> she does art. She's actually really good. So. so this is string. Again, what this is showing you is it's a pathway analyzer, right? Pathway miner. We see the pathways down here. We also have the networks because it's grouping things based on any interactions that it finds in its database. Okay. Much rather look at this than I would a table. This kind of gives you hierarchy. Okay, so that is string. Now let's look at correlation engine.